Good afternoon, friends. So it is finally happening. Inflation is starting to cool down, but even as the cost of living continues to ease across the U.S., many low-income households will still be eligible to claim at least one more stimulus check. Eligibility requirements for these payments may become stricter. Friends, this is the latest details on stimulus, so please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also, I'll be giving away a $50 Walmart gift card every day during the month of December. Please enter these giveaways by clicking and liking several of my videos and comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. My friends, the more videos that you comment on, the more likely your chances of winning these giveaways. The debt limit, uh, we have said again and again that we want to do that in a bipartisan way. We think that would be the appropriate way to go. Right now, we do have to, though, get to a place on the uh, omnibus because it takes time to do. You know, and, and we were discussing this last night and said even if we had an agreement tomorrow, it would still take a while to get it in the form that would bring it uh, to the floor. So that, that is uh, the priority right now. We want us to stop the work stoppage, we, which we did yesterday. Now the Senate will deal with that. We'll take up marriage equality next week, next Tuesday. But the, the, what remains to be done is the omnibus. Uh, we also have the defense authorization bill. But, but they, uh, I hope that we could do the debt ceiling this year, but we were tr are striving to do it in a bipartisan way. This year, many states have issued inflation relief checks to help residents cope with increased inflation and sky-high prices. Typically, funding has come from budget surpluses and is sent to residents who filed 2020 and 2021 tax returns. However, each state's eligibility requirements, amounts, and date of payment differs. Although many state stimulus checks have been going out since the beginning of the year, there are still many slated to come this month. Stimulus checks worth $270 are already on their way for eligible New Yorkers. The checks are part of the latest stimulus payments issued by Governor Kathy Hochul. She said the taxation department would release the child and earn income tax payments by the end of this year to help residents fight rising inflation. It is estimated that 1.75 million New York residents will receive this payment. The payment is part of the budget for fiscal year 2023. Recipients will receive the checks automatically. Those who receive at least $100 from an Empire State Child Credit or Earned Income Credit and filed a tax return with the state by April 18, 2021, do not need to do anything else. California residents still waiting to receive up to $1,050 to help offset the cost of rising inflation rates can expect the next wave of payments to arrive by the end of December. Officials are set to begin distributing more of the state's middle-class tax refund payments throughout this month, sending roughly $9.5 billion to California's residents through direct payment. Payments can either be delivered through a direct deposit or can be sent as a prepaid debit card, which may take a few weeks to be delivered. The state began sending out the payments in October, but many residents have not received their checks or debit cards. However, officials announced that residents with the last names beginning with letters N through V should expect to receive their payments by December 31st. Any outstanding payments should arrive by the end of January. Friends, the key word for this video is Beavertail State Park. If you would like to enter today's Walmart gift card giveaway, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below this keyword, which is Beavertail State Park and additional keywords of any video of mine that you watch. And do make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Mortgage rates dipped again this week marking the third straight week of falling rate. The 30-year fixed rate mortgage averaged 6.49% in the week ending December 1st. That is down from 6.58% the week before. Just one year ago, the 30-year fixed rate was 3.11%. So mortgage rates have risen throughout most of 2022, spurred by the Federal Reserve's unprecedented campaign of hiking interest rates in order to tame high inflation. But in the last couple of weeks, mortgage rates have tumbled, 
Following reports have indicated inflation may have finally reached its peak. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said this week the central bank could start pulling back on the pace of its aggressive rate hikes as soon as this month. Sam Cater, Freddie Mac's chief economist, recently told reporters, mortgage rates continue to drop this week as optimism grows around the prospect that the Federal Reserve will slow its pace of rate hikes. But even with the softening rates and easing prices, economic uncertainty is tamping down home buyer demand as we enter the last month of the year. Powell's remarks on Wednesday were welcome news to investors, but he also stated, despite some promising developments, we have a long way to go, noting that the Fed has not seen clear progress on the decade's high inflation plaguing the economy. Mortgage rates tend to track the yield on 10-year U.S. Treasury bonds as investors see or anticipate rate hikes. They may make moves which sends yields higher and mortgage rates rise. Investors are also watching the Fed's favorite inflation measure, which was just released today, and it showed some cooling. Taken together with yesterday's big news from Powell, U.S. Treasury yields fell suggesting that mortgage rates are likely to go in the same direction. Well, my amazing and beautiful dear friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Sunday afternoon. Thank you so much, friends, for joining me here every day and watching all the videos that I post. I want you all to know that I greatly appreciate all of you. The winner of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway is Dawn Colley. Congratulations, my dear friend. To claim your gift card, please check your notifications page and send me a message. Or you can message me on my Facebook page. Friends, remember that I'll be giving away a gift card every day during this month of December. So please enter these giveaways by clicking and liking several of my videos. And then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. Thank you, dear friends, and have a wonderful and blessed weekend. It is important. Um, Iowa is a leader in renewable energies, and we're very, very proud of that. Um, so the impact uh, that Rural Energy for America program has uh, has been very good, but historically under underutilized, I think. And what are you saying as far as barriers? Uh, what deters those applicants from applying for the REAP program? And what can we do to make sure those dollars are getting to our local communities? Senator, I would love to follow up with you on okay. that. It's my understanding that REAP is... is overwhelmingly oversubscribed, so we don't have enough funds to get it out to all the folks who are applying for it. Okay, maybe we need to get more of those dollars into Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's the issue. Um, but yeah, I would love to visit with you more about that. Um, it's certainly an important program. Um, so as well, before we move on, I've just got a little over a minute and a half remaining, but um, for our second panel, I know that we have Dr. Schilling here with us as well from Gino, and I just want to thank you for being here today. I will not be able to make it for the second half of this meeting, um, but I am very, very excited because Gino has committed uh, to Iowa farmers by supporting a $300 million project with uh, the Cargill Corn Facility to manufacture BioBDO. And so this is something that we are very excited about in Iowa, and we really look to the future and other types of value-added programs as well that will help support our farmers and our ranchers. So thanks.